So right now there is a very big debate taking place, I think partly spurred by the loss of the Republicans in the recent elections and Obama's 71% of Hispanic voters who voted for him, you know, leading the, the Republicans to really realize that they have to concede something in this immigration reforms and to pass some kind of legislation. And so now there are these bipartisan efforts being made and I think that you know they're, they're really focusing on border security as a huge part of saying, well, if we're going to provide any kind of amnesty to, to workers who are currently here illegally, we have to tighten up the border so that more don't think that they can come in through. This is, these are the parameters of the debate right now. And I think it's really important to keep in sight that amnesty has to be a, a, a huge part of this, that, that legalization and giving citizenship to these workers has to absolutely be on the table for a number of reasons. Immigration policy cannot be seen in a vacuum from broader free trade policies, for instance, which create the conditions upon which many workers in Mexico, for instance, were forced to come looking for jobs in the United States because they cannot cultivate their lands anymore. And so I think we also have to look at the broader policies that uh, can deprive workers of work in their home countries to begin with and try to come up with a situation that not only allows for more work opportunities for workers in their home countries, but if they absolutely must work in the United States, provides them a way to be with their families and to travel back and forth without the kind of penalties that exist right now. If we look at undocumented immigrants and then the, num you know, the 11 million is, we hear that figure, but really the ramifications of undocumented status are, go way beyond those 11 million because most undocumented immigrants live in mixed status families. Really I think we should think of undocumented as a family issue, not as an individual issue. So that if you can have an undocumented person and living in a family, very often they have U.S. citizen children. And very often, in many, some cases, I don't know if very often, but some cases, their spouse will have legal status. And certainly other relatives who they're very close to will have legal status. So this means that the undocumented person's undocumented status, first of all, is of concern to a wider group, which is one of the reasons for the political pressure that we see. But another is that their undocumented status has great ramifications for their family lives. I think one of the problems that undocumented parents who have U.S. citizen children worry about is are they going to get deported? Because then what's going to happen to their children? Are going to, their children, after all, were born here? Maybe growing up here, or speak only English, or going to U.S. schools, what do they do? And you know, there's been a large numbers of deportations last year what, four, of about 400,000, so it's very high. So this threat of deportation is just very difficult. And of course, the inability to get work in the regulated economy. So it's a terrible thing. Um, so one would hope <laughs> that Congress uh, would pass legislation that would provide a way for these people to legalize their status. Um, and a pathway to citizenship in the United States. Well, it's a very divided country politically when you weigh everything on a national political scale, both in terms of the closeness of the presidential elections and the representation in the houses of Congress. And there, there are a great many people on the Republican side who are dead set against lifting this cloud from the unauthorized. The, the interests of the Republican Party, however, are really to incorporate more immigrant votes over time as the demograph demographic history plays out. And strategists like Karl Rove and, and uh, President Bush and his two sons and, and other figures in the Republican Party are quite aware of this. And within immigrant communities, there's a lot of conservatism around taxes, regulations, small businesses, even on lifestyle issues, if many immigrants are coming from Catholic origin and uh, may not be as supportive of gay marriage, for example, as, as, as other groups. So Republican strategists, I think, see the handwriting on the law, wall and would prefer for the party to tone, tone down its anti-immigrant uh, uh, tendencies and, and to strike a deal on this, but it's going to be a very close call, it seems to me, as to whether the leadership 
the Republican leadership in the House, in, in particular, is going to be able to bring enough of its members into al alignment around reform to achieve it. I would have to say my nervousness would be about moving towards a system that has too many temporary workers, too many guest workers. I really hate the notion of developing a large class of people that are part of American society uh, economically and mm -hmm. culturally, so, you know, here physically, so inevitably they become part of the society socially but not politically. Uh, I think that truly ill serves a democratic society is to have a, not even second class citizens is the wrong word, but second class denizens, people who are here, part of our world, and yet at the same time don't have those political rights. Of course, we may have to accept a certain amount of that simply because part of the political bargain for, uh, for getting uh, immigration reform is going to be to have some sort of temporary status for a lot of people or some less than full citizenship status. But I would hope that we can move towards some route to citizenship that's actually navigable. And many of the versions that are now being talked about uh, in the House and Senate are really that kind of extremely torturous route into any kind of citizenship or even to legal permanent residence. Um, and I think in the long run that's a very bad idea. The long experience with guest worker programs in Europe and in the United States indicates that um, if you're looking for those programs to protect immigrants' basic rights as workers, while at the same time discouraging permanent settlement and having people circulate in and out of those positions, uh, it will probably fail on both scores. We need to worry in this country about integrating the children and grandchildren of contemporary immigrants. And we can see that many of them are suffering from disadvantages associated with immigrant origin, but also with ethno-racial um, background. And, you know, this is a very large portion of the contemporary second and third generations that is disadvantaged um, in these ways. Um, and to meet the needs of the enormous demographic shifts of the next 25 to 30 years, these young people um, need to be included as well. To my mind, that's a, a very strong incentive to recommend not simply an immigration-focused strategy, but also a strategy of investment in education in a way that will um, accelerate the integration of the children and grandchildren of today's immigrants.